Where the fuck have you been? Uh. Huh? Catch the focus. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? Are you gonna ask my permission? It's none of your fucking business. Oleg, you need permission. Oleg, you need permission from me. My name is Patrick Ridge. This is my sober living. This is my production company, Ridge Production. This is my awesome wife, Veronica. I'm sober, my wife is not and that's okay. At the end of the day, we both really just wanna help people by sharing our experience, strength, and hope. This is our life together, unfiltered, unscripted. Welcome to our reality, no bullshit. Obsession with drinking is so bad that only God can remove it from me. Yeah, I can't. I can't stop on my own willpower. Derek's great now. I mean, he fucking relapsed in the house, got honest about it, wrote a bunch of fucking words, got humble. You need to allow that to happen, which means you got to get out of the way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Once I realized just how powerless I really am and how fucked up like my life is, am I able to like move forward? I'm glad that um, the drama between my dad and Larry didn't cause him to leave the house. Now he's that much closer to paying his own way and hopefully graduating. It's not even so much that your life is fucked up. It's it's almost that I fucked. Well, that I I fucked my life. Up. Yeah, for sure. But it's just recognizing our powerlessness over our thinking is where we can finally like let go. Talking to my brother and my dad the other week when I was frustrated, I had feelings inside that were like really fucking gnarly. It's so hard to like speak when emotions are high, intelligence is low, and it's really hard to like say what you mean. Getting sober for reals and staying sober when you're like a real hope to die drug addict like the way me and Derek are, it's it's gonna be, it's gonna take a lot of like work and reprogramming of our brains. So they, they're forcing him to see that shit. Johnny. I have Pat on the phone. Hey, what's up, bro? What's up, bro? Can you just take down the list here? So, and so then I started creating this theory in my head that like, well, if I'm gonna be masturbating in a porta potty shooting crystal meth anyways, why go back to AA? Johnny thinks that he's gonna be a big movie star and that footage is going to hurt his reputation in Hollywood. I mean, it's just like fucking horrible. Yeah, but that's not, so, oh, so, so listen. I think that filming people exposes their angels and or their demons. Like, I didn't think Daniel thought of me that way. I sent you a news video. Yeah, like jacking off. That's weird. Yeah. Right. yeah. Because he's fucking crazy. He's like crazy. It's like horrific crazy. Somebody what do you else. mean, Johnny? You're the, it's horrific crazy what you wrote, what you sent me. I didn't want sex. Well, sometimes, but hardly. Oh. It makes me want to go fuck some basic bitches so I can get my self-respect back. God, it's just funny. You used to laugh at everything I said. And we would hold hands and pray, and I never wanted to put my dick in your mouth or anything for like months. Honestly, yeah, right, it was fucking high. Okay, John, you're not taking responsibility for the shit that you said, dude. Look, call it a camera, call it taping, call it filming, call it whatever you want. But all it is is a way for other human beings to see the truth. If you want to come and tell your side and apologize and explain why you did what you did and what happens to you when you use drugs and the person you become, I would be more than happy to like make that video about you, for you, and talk about how fucking ill we both think you are and how much potential we think you have. And even after all the shit that happened, we're both still down to fuck with you because I think there's something special deep down inside. Or can I call yeah. you guys right back? Dude, I'm 
I'm not taking shit now. Sorry. Oh, wow. I'm so, so This is so weird seeing here. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm so grateful. For everything that you put on there. Yeah, I mean, thank you. It helps me. This is my favorite place to come, this diner. <laughs> then when I see you guys going through it, I'm like, okay, it's not just up. So here. I recognize the power of this platform. Not only when it comes to building a sustainable brand, but like influencing people. So if I'm going to try to influence people, Dude, I want to try to influence them in a good way. In a way that could maybe help them be happier and more fulfilled in their life. Being able to relate to others is like healing. I think a big part of the problem with our world is everyone's faking it. Maybe I can try to help change the narrative a little bit about like, yo, what is cool? Learning to lose. It's like learning to like loss and, and our flaws and all these bad things, like they're actually opportunities for growth. I don't do nothing. Yeah. My boyfriend still doesn't smoke, so he does everything else. Yeah. And it's hard. We can coexist. Exactly. I got my shit, and that doesn't have anything to do with it. Exactly. You gotta be careful not to put your shit on him. Exactly. Like, let him enjoy himself. The truth is, you don't need all the things that society tells you you need to be a happy person. All you need is, a pe is peace of mind and some humility and some kindness. How long have you been sober? 13 days. Off for some Oh, okay, but how, what, 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 why, how long have you been sober off everything? Well, I had almost three years and then I went out. How long have you been sober? You still want to help Johnny Crump because he's an alcoholic, okay? Alcoholics do fucked up shit. We've been forgiven, so now we're going to forgive, so. How long well, have I'm you been sober? sober? There's only one sober. I mean, look, that's it. There's only one sober. Wow, what'd you do today? Okay, What'd you do today? If Johnny really wants to get sober, if he really wants help, we're gonna be there to help him. Taking a character. Oh, you are, huh? Step one. We admitted we were powerless over alcohol, and that our lives had become unmanageable. Who cares to admit complete defeat? Practically no one, of course. Every natural instinct cries out against the idea of personal powerlessness. It is truly awful to admit that, glass in hand, we have warped our minds into such an obsession for destructive drinking that only an act of providence can remove it from us. Okay, so did you write anything down? No. Okay, so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to read chapter one and you're supposed to write down any kind of direction. Oh. Yeah, I, I told you that twice. Yeah, I definitely give Johnny tough love. You know, alcoholics need to hear the truth. I think that they're saying we need to admit complete defeat. So I, I know I'm defeated every day, like I know. We're both just two alcoholics that are just trying to figure this out. My name's Mikey, I'm an alcoholic. And prep time is, you know, Right it's before we play, mm -hmm. you know, people drink, mm -hmm. people sing, people warm like up. Like I like brush my like teeth. You brush your teeth? Every day. Like but today, like I forgot my toothbrush. And thank you. Our next guests are a uh, talented young uh, band uh, whose uh, CD is entitled We Are Pilots. Please welcome, making their network television debut, Shiny Toy Guns. <laughs> The first like eight years of my recovery, I was the only sober person, kind of like Pat, in a band, trying to navigate through this chaos of, I hate to say it, stardom or, or influence or whatever, whatever the music industry puts in your head that you're going to do when it comes to music. And, and I felt alone at, at times because um, I was the only sober person. And, and I knew for myself that, um, I didn't have music if I didn't have recovery. A song called Mikey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is this still live at 27? Therapist. Before Alive at 27. This song.
It's about a kid who has cancer. And then like he got cancer. Even the smell of summer, which a lot of times can smell like fire and danger and, you know, bad things can um, turn into good things. Being with Pat when he was in Hyper Crush, he was newly sober then, so let's just say all the practices of hadn't kicked in yet. So he was a lunatic. Like he's a lunatic now, but he was an untreated lunatic back then. So my best friend went on tour with them, the Lady Gaga tour, and she said that he would like push people out of the way. Like that was the height of his, I guess, like sober alcoholism, you know what I mean? Just treating people around him super poorly just because all he could think about um, was on hand what was in front of him. But I remember towards the end of Hyper Crush, um, like one of the last shows, I think we knew it was gonna be the last show, feeling super emotional because I was so proud of my three friends and what they had accomplished and what they did for work for five years, traveled the world, supported over five people, um, creating art and, you know, just how much fun they had. And it had just been such a ride. I got to be a part of all the music videos. So I just felt really proud of them and um, Pat in particular because He's just so focused, you know? When he wants something, he gets it. You are now in the Hyper Crush Future Machine. For those of you who are ready for an absolute digital meltdown, begin creating noise in three, two, one. I definitely am someone who, who has always been desperately seeking for a ridiculous amount of validation and approval. I think that used to be like my primary goal with, with the music shit. So Pat's why for Hyper Crush or whatever project in the moment, I mean, is it validation? Yeah, of course. Whether it be validation from friends, validation from his dad. Um, but I feel also he really doesn't do something unless there's just to do it the best you possibly can. Like, why just make music with friends for fun? Like, unless it's on the radio or, or you know, whatever his goals were at that time. Selling, I feel like it was getting on the radio. I don't remember, but I will say um, it was interesting in the end because he's like, wait a minute, I don't even like being on tour and I don't like being on the road. So then it was kind of like, why am I pushing for a life that I really don't necessarily want to live. So yeah, I think probably to answer your question, the validation was driving him so much he didn't even realize that it wasn't what he wanted in his life to be on the road, in a tour bus, on planes, at drunk venues. We started doing dance music like three, four years ago. Almost mm -hmm. five heavily. years ago. But you've known each other since like middle school. Yes. We definitely learned a lot from you guys. Now my primary goal is actually to, to to try to transmit this message that I've been given. Like, for example, this video I posted this morning. Daily Reflections, July 21st, a priceless gift. It has been proven that an act of surrender originating in desperation and defeat can grow into an ongoing act of faith. That faith means freedom and victory. So if you're in a shitty place, just, just remember that it's only through desperation and defeat that I can experience surrender in the grace of God. Everyone thinks surrendering is yeah. is an evil word or a scary word, but for me, like when I call my sponsor, when I work the steps, when I go to meetings, I'm all I'm doing for myself is joining the right side. Yeah. Like so that's that's the biggest thing yeah, to answer yeah, the question. Yeah. yeah, meetings meetings help, but you put it perfectly, it's like if you're not doing the work, yeah, yeah. you know, but this is the work. I only want all of us to be able to keep doing this and only this.
I built like a bunch of different things like Hyper Crush and Ridge Production and now this new learning to lose thing that I'm trying to do. If you don't think about the results and you just keep doing things because you love doing them, like eventually you're gonna get more than what you ever hoped to get. My vision is to help people live better and at the same time myself. My vulnerability makes me strong. That's like everything, dude. Your reactions are, are minimal. Until they're not. A lot of my followers are sober. So they're like, you're strong, you're so inspiring. I, I would never be able to hang out around those people. So then they see her and they're like, they're, they're putting their own shit on her because we don't even understand how somebody could take drugs responsibly. People can and she does. The podcast is... Me and Billy, my sponsor, talking about life, recovery, and whatever whatever guests we have on, and we sort of are trying to relate everything back to Learning to Lose. Oh my God, the Learning to Lose podcast started with you. I forgot, and it was a cool, like, you know, young versus old. Yeah, I, I feel like Pat used to film these um, movie reviews, and it's like, you don't know how many people watched them or saw them. Um, and as the podcast world started to grow, it, it was just cool to have, you know, you and him have um, completely different views, but same views on stuff and have long form conversations. And then um, Wickham and Pat had their little falling out and Billy joined the podcast and that brought another energy um, to the podcast that I think like Pat and Billy are very much yin and yang. Billy and Pat went through this, a similar situation with CBD and Pat was actually brave enough and honest enough to talk about it openly on social media. I've been sober for uh, 14 years and I've been recently started taking CBD oil. I definitely feel some type of way when I'm taking it. Is that a relapse? I guess not. CBD's got me kind of off, dude. Really? I, gotta, I gotta be honest with you. I, I just got me like in my head a little bit. This is my sobriety and I fucking take it very seriously. And um, that's why I'm talking about this. Well, now we know a, an alcoholic cannot administer their own CBD. Although I have so many friends in the program doing this. It's hard to tr transmit these, these messages in like one minute videos. So if you really want to understand all this stuff, then just listen to the podcast. I do believe God is moving through people, um, people who are open, open channels to, to be able to be moved. Um, and I think God has big plans, uh, is using Pat. What's his um, Wi-Fi password here? Satan666. Can it not be that? Fuck God. No, I know I do. I believe in God now. This might this might just be the funniest thing you've ever done. Cause I said I don't care what fucking cup you put it in. <laughs> this might just have been. So what are you drinking then? This is my chill tea. Tea from Russia? Yeah, this tea I I I so since I've stopped using drugs and alcohol, I've become obsessed with basically whatever you got. And this guy in Russia has tea, so I buy it from him. He's a nut job. He, he's a freak of nature and um, a lunatic, but I love and respect that about him because I think in, in, this, in any day and age, I feel like you have to be a little crazy to make change in the world. Ready to do our weekly Sermon on the Mount meeting? Ever since Pat told me about the Monday night meeting, I've been here ever since. No Little Emmett Fox up in the building. We read chapters of the Sermon on the Mount and we share about those chapters as they relate to our life and what we're going through today and how we can better apply these principles in our life so that we're happier and, and we're not struggling so much. We have that meeting every uh, Monday at 7.30 and we stream it live on my YouTube channel, Patrick Ridge, and we're going to be doing that inevitably. Honestly, our meeting is pretty similar to AA, except for you're just, you, there's no requirements. But I do believe that like alcoholism is, is, is similar to the human condition. Like, you know, this idea that all humans are struggling and life is struggling, life is suffering. And to be able to like recognize that, see that, 
and embrace that is, um, I think, beneficial to everyone, sober or not. Because we can't like, compare a story like pain is pain mm. and the vices, like my vice from like missing, like having daddy issues and mom issues was like relationships. So maybe I didn't go from a young age to always drinking the bottle, but I had to. Something else was always filling that void for me. But I learned in AA that it's only going through it that you're going to get to the other side of it. So the Sermon on the Mount meeting was um, just really cool because during COVID there was a lot of alcoholics uh, or people that were lonely that needed uh, a group to be able to talk and discuss um, and go through. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount or just what conversations it led to. So it kind of was the beginning of getting out of the darkness of the pandemic. Um, and, you know, some people don't really do the Zoom meetings. So them sitting outside and doing the meeting, meeting was like such an awesome opportunity for him to kind of get back into talking alcoholism and the mind because he loves talking about that. And almost setting him up for practice with Graceland. It started to get a little intense. Um, so it was great initially, but then more and more people came and then they would start coming into the house. And let's say I'm with a client, um, you know, and I only have like 15 minutes to eat. I got to come in and there's like everyone trying to talk to me or flooding the kitchen. And like, you know, COVID was still kind of a thing. So you're like, uh, should we all be in the house? I don't know. It was just like getting really intense and it was hard for me to like Pat's passions were pouring over, even though we're both learning to lose. Like I still love to do hair and have clients here. So it just got really crazy and I started becoming a bitch. Um, but he was super respectful and Mikey and Wickham also made it possible to like constrain, keep it outside. And then it was really cold. I felt bad. So I'm super grateful they have the space, the platform, and they are able to help so many people. Um, and that it's, you know, there's a lot of things that are great about AA that, that I wish the whole world would live by. So it's kind of cool that like, this isn't an AA meeting, it's a Sermon on the Mount meeting. And so people can just learn about the mind and bettering themselves and, and connect. All souls are created equal. Uh, on this planet and what someone has or someone does has has no effect on the wise man in this entire world that is built upon uh, and programmed into us since we're kids about success 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 what is the success the success they program into you is a dollar bill well, I'm gonna have this house and I have a, a, a fence and a cars and kids and house over there and you know lots of money fame and fortune that's what they program into you they don't give you uh, the gift of really what's most important, which is virtue, kindness, consideration, forgiveness, and love. We're, we're gonna post what you said on the internet. Are you cool with that? Yeah, sure. Because they, people need to hear that. <laughs> yeah. And that's the shit that needs to be going viral. Yeah. Not some chick doing a dance with big tits. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's cool too. No. I'm not <laughs> mad at that either. In times of desperation, Jesus comes through. And so I, I, I give Jesus all the credit. So what was your sponsee's name? Natalie Hall. And you were, and this was, so she died two years ago. Yeah. Uh, and, and you had been sponsoring her for? Three years. Did you guys do the steps and shit? Yes. And then she just went out? She went out because she was gaining weight and she got on um, Adderall or Vyvanse. And I told her not to do that. I said that that was a relapse. And then she got on it and then went to Xanax and then went to fentanyl and heroin. That affected a lot of people. That was like her passing was a, it was just crazy. So I might be this person, you know, like if I would have, Maybe a year ago, if there was somebody like me sitting right here talking about Jesus, I would have been like, yeah, cool, like whatever, I don't really relate. But I'm passionate about it because of my life experience and where I've had to be desperate and rely on God. I've been shown that Jesus is God. 
this thing that we're doing is for the losers and the underdogs and the people that are in pain. That's, those are the people that are poor in spirit. I was someone who was poor in spirit. Mikey was someone who was poor in spirit. Danielle was poor in spirit. Every fucking person here at one point or another was at a bottom and pretty much questioning whether they should even be alive anymore. What's the point? Okay, that's poor. That's, those are the kinds of people that Jesus is speaking to. Why? I don't know. Tim asked me the other day, why can't you just be happy and high five Jesus? And I'm like, I don't know. It just doesn't work that way. It's like, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. It's darkest before the dawn. Like, I don't know. Things, shit has to get dark. And, you know, the, the, the cracks are how the light gets in. Just um, all hell broke loose last night. My sponsor uh, basically had his whole life wrecked. Holy fuck, I'm so sad for him. I'm on one. What's your emergency?